and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. I am Smriti Rastoki. The Constitution of India is the supreme law governing the country. It frames fundamental political principles, procedures, practices, rights, powers and duties of the government. The constitutional provisions in India on the subject of distribution of legislative powers between the union and the states are defined under several articles and schedules. The seventh schedule under Article 246 of the Constitution deals with the division of powers between the Union and the states. It contains three lists, the Union list, the State list and the Conference list. The Union list details the subjects on which Parliament may make laws, while the State list details those under the purview of the state legislatures. The concurrent list, on the other hand, has subjects in which both the Parliament and the state legislatures have jurisdiction. However, the Constitution provides federal supremacy to the Parliament on concurrent list items in case of a conflict. Today, in in-depth, we are discussing the seventh schedule of the Constitution, the lists it includes and the features of our Constitution. The seventh schedule of the Constitution under Article 246 deals with the division of powers between the Union and the states. It contains three lists, Union list, State list and Concurrent list. The first list under the seventh schedule of the Constitution is the Union list. It contains subjects which are of national importance and on which the legislative powers are solely vested in the Parliament. Some of these matters are defence, foreign affairs, currency and coinage, national resources, railways, shipping and airways, communication, citizenship, among others. The Union List is a list of topics mentioned under the 7th Schedule of the Constitution of India on which the Parliament has exclusive power to legislate. The Union List has 97 numbered items that fall under the scope of the Parliament. As per the list, National security falls under the Union list. Some of the items relating to the defence and security are Defence of India, including preparation for defence and all such acts as may be conducive in times of war. Naval, military and air forces and the other armed forces of the Union. Delimitation of cantonment areas, local self-government in such areas. Arms, firearms, ammunition and explosives atomic energy and mineral resources necessary for their production, industries declared by law as necessary for defence purposes, the Central Bureau of Intelligence and Investigation, preventive detention for reasons connected with defence, foreign affairs or the security of India. It contains the subject which are basically relatable to the whole of country. Take for uh, ex uh, example the union services, the armed forces, these are the subjects which are allocated to the central government and the central has got right to make laws on these subjects. India's foreign relations, diplomatic ties and participation in global organizations also fall under the union list. Foreign affairs, diplomatic counselor and trade representation, United Nations organization, participation in international conferences, associations and other bodies, entering into treaties and agreements with foreign countries and their implementation, war and peace, foreign jurisdiction, citizenship, naturalization and aliens, extradition, passports and visas, piracies and crimes committed on the high seas or in the air, transportation including railways, national highways, shipping and navigation on national waterways, ports and port authorities, Airways and aerodromes are included in the Union list. Forms of communication including posts and telegraphs, telephones, wireless, broadcasting and others fall under the scope of the Union list. The Parliament also has the sole authority to legislate on revenue, debt, currency and trade related matters. The subjects on which only uh, Parliament can make laws, say defence, say telecommunications and say, uh, finance, uh, finance means monetary, I think, uh, basically currency and all. On these subjects, only the parliament can make laws. States cannot make laws regarding these subjects. And uh, say railways, 
information and broadcasting. These are all only subjects which are with the Union Parliament and only Parliament can make laws. And uh, uh, the division is primarily to keep in, uh, to, to divide the subjects. And this is in tune with federal polity, which is the structure of this country. Property of the Union and the revenue from it, public debt of the Union, currency, coinage and legal tender, foreign exchange, the Reserve Bank of India, Post Office Savings Bank, trade and commerce with foreign countries, interstate, banking, insurance and financial corporations, but not including cooperative societies, stock exchanges and future markets. The Parliament also has the authority to legislate on matters related to several industries. Industries, the control of which by the Union is in public interest, oil fields and mineral oil resources, petroleum, other dangerously inflammable liquids, regulation of mines and mineral development, regulation of labour and safety in mines and oil fields, development of interstate rivers and river valleys, as declared by law to be in public interest, fishing and fisheries beyond territorial waters, and industrial disputes concerning union employees. Institutions of national importance, including the National Library, the Indian Museum, the Imperial War Museum, the Victoria Memorial and the Indian War Memorial, etc. are also under the Union list. This also includes the Banaras Hindu University, the Aligarh Muslim University and the Delhi University, among others. Union agencies and institutions for professional, vocational or technical training, including the training of police officers, ancient and historical monuments and records and archaeological sites, census and the Union Public Services. One of the key topics in the Union list is the conduct of elections and Parliament. Elections to Parliament, to state legislatures and to the offices of President and Vice President. The Election Commission, salaries and allowances of members of Parliament, the Chairman and Deputy Chairman of Rajya Sabha and the Speaker and Deputy Speaker of the Lok Sabha powers, privileges and immunities of each House of Parliament and the audit of the accounts of the Union and of the States. Constitution, organization, jurisdiction and powers of the Supreme Court and High Court also fall under the Union list. Central taxes, duties and customs including export duties. The Parliament can also legislate on offences against laws with respect to any of the matters in this list. Inquiry, surveys and statistics for the purpose of any of the matters in this list are under the scope of the Union list. With inputs from Vipul Agarwal, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And let's now talk about the state list, mentioned as the list second in the seventh schedule. It contains 61 items and speaks about the subject matters. Those are related to local or state interest. The subjects in the state list fall directly within the legislative competence of the state legislature. The state list or list 2 is a list of 61 items in the 7th schedule of the constitution. It includes subjects which fall under the purview of state legislatures. This means only the states are entitled to make laws on these subjects. The Constitution provides that the Parliament shall not encroach the law-making power of the state legislatures in respect of the matters referred to in List 2 by virtue of federalism. Some of the prominent subjects mentioned in the state list include public order, but not including the use of any naval, military or air force or any other armed force of the Union or of any other force subject to the control of the Union or of any other contingent. The police officers and servants of the High Court, prisons, reformatories, Boston institutions and arrangements with other states for the use of prisons and other institutions. Local government, which includes the constitution and powers of municipal corporations, improvement trusts, district boards, mining settlement authorities and other local authorities for the purpose of local self-government or village administration. Public health and sanitation, which includes hospitals and dispensaries. Pilgrimages, other than pilgrimages to places outside India. Intoxicating liquors, which includes the production, manufacture, possession, transport, purchase and sale of intoxicating liquors. 
relief of the disabled and unemployable, burials and burial grounds, cremations and cremation grounds, libraries, museums and other similar institutions controlled or financed by the state, ancient and historical monuments and records other than those declared to be of national importance. Communications, which includes roads, bridges, ferries and other means of communication not specified in the union list. Municipal tramways, ropeways, inland waterways and vehicles other than mechanically propelled vehicles. And agriculture, including agricultural education and research, protection against pests and prevention of plant diseases. Law and order, because law and order is to be enforced by the police authorities. Police authorities are in the state, so it goes to them. In uh, uh, 1976, uh, 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 an amendment was made, which is known as the 42nd Amendment to the Constitution, where certain entries from were transferred from state list to concurrent list, thereby giving power to the center as well as to, as well as to state uh, in respect of certain uh, uh, certain subjects. One of them, uh, one of the subjects relating to them is administration of justice, or uh, say plant protection forest, environment. These are the subjects which were transferred to list 3 so that the parliament can also make law on those subjects. This was done by way of 42nd amendment. Some other subjects in the state list include preservation, protection and improvement of stock and prevention of animal diseases, veterinary training and practice, pounds in the prevention of cattle trespass, water which includes water supplies irrigation and canals drainage and embankments water storage and water power land which includes right in or over land land tenures including the relation of landlord and tenant and the collection of rents transfer and alienation of agricultural land land improvement and agricultural loans fisheries regulation of mines and mineral development subject to the provisions of the union list industries, gas and gas works, trade and commerce within the state, production, supply and distribution of goods and works, lands and buildings vested in or in the possession of the state. Elections to the legislature of the state subject to the provisions of any law made by parliament. Salaries and allowances of members of the legislature of the state, of the speaker and deputy speaker of the legislative assembly, and if there is a legislative council of the chairman and deputy chairman of the council. Powers, privileges and immunities of the legislative assembly and of the members and the committees. And if there is a legislative council of that council and of the members and the committees. State public services and the state public service commission. State pensions, which includes pensions payable by the state or out of the consolidated fund of the state. Public debt of the state. Treasure trove. Land revenue, which includes the assessment and collection of revenue, the maintenance of land records, survey for revenue purposes, and records of rights and alienation of revenues. Taxes on agricultural income, duties in respect of succession to agricultural land, and estate duty in respect of agricultural land are also part of the state list. Besides, offences against laws with respect to any of the matters mentioned in the state list and the jurisdiction and powers of all courts except the Supreme Court with respect to any of the matters in this list are also crucial to list 2 in the 7th schedule of the Constitution. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV The third list under the 7th schedule of the Indian Constitution is called the concurrent list. It includes the power to be considered by both the centre and the state government. Take a look at this report. Concurrent list is the most distinctive feature of the Indian constitution as it cannot be found in any other federal constitution. It includes the power to be considered by both the central and the state governments. Among the 52 items enumerated in the list, all can be legislated upon by both the union and the state legislatures as both of them possess the concurrent power of legislation. The 52 items currently on the list are Criminal law, including all matters included in the Indian Penal Code but excluding the use of naval, military or air forces. Criminal procedure, including all matters included in the Code of Criminal Procedure. Preventive detention for reasons connected with the security of a state. 
removal from one state to another state of prisoners, matters relating to personal law, transfer of property other than agricultural land, contracts including partnership, agency and other special forms of contracts, actionable wrongs, bankruptcy and insolvency, trust and trustees, administrators, general and official trustees, evidence and oaths and judicial proceedings, civil procedure, contempt of court but not including contempt of the Supreme Court, vagrancy, nomadic and migratory tribes, lunacy and mental deficiency, adulteration of foodstuffs and other goods, drugs and poisons, economic and social planning, population control and family planning, commercial and industrial monopolies, trade unions, industrial and labour disputes, social security and social insurance, welfare of labour, legal, medical and other professions, rehabilitation of persons displaced due to partition, charitable institutions, prevention of the extension from one state to another of infectious or contagious diseases or pests affecting men, animals or plants, vital statistics including registration of births and deaths, major ports, shipping and navigation on inland waterways, trade and commerce in production, supply and distribution of foodstuffs, cattle fodder, raw cotton, raw jute, price control, mechanically propelled vehicles, factories, boilers, electricity, newspapers, books and printing presses, archaeological sites, custody, management and disposal of property declared by law to be evacuee property, acquisition and requisitioning of property, recovery in a state of claims in respect of taxes, stamp duties, inquiries and statistics for the purposes of any of the matters specified in List 2 or List 3, jurisdiction and powers of all courts except the Supreme Court and fees in respect of any of the matters in this list. Basically, uh, the subjects on which both the uh, both parliament and state legislatures can make law. As I have told, already told you, if there is a law enacted by a state legislature on a subject which is in the concurrent list, and parliament also chooses to enact a law, in that case there, there might be a situation where the state law is coming in conflict with the uh, par law enacted by parliament, and uh, applying the rule of repugnancy, the central law shall prevail over the state law to the extent of conflict or to the extent the state law is repugnant to the central law. Through the 42nd Amendment Act of 1976, five subjects were transferred from state to concurrent list. They are education, forests, weights and measures, protection of wild animals and birds and administration of justice. The concurrent list mostly serves as a device to loosen the excessive rigidity of the two-fold distribution. It is mostly considered as the twilight zone of the constitution as it allows the legislative power to vary from state legislature to parliament based on the importance of the matters. Like in case of not so important matters, state legislature takes the charge and in case of important ones, parliament does the same. Also, in terms of amplification of laws passed by the Union Parliament, state legislatures do not have the rights to introduce supplementary laws for the same. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And let's now understand the need and importance of the seventh schedule of the Indian Constitution. Whenever we look at the constitution of a federal nation, the one thing stands out is the distribution of power between the centre and the state. But as far as the Indian constitution is concerned, the concept of federalism that our constitution follows came from the specific needs of our countrymen at the time, subsequently leading to the framing of a unique kind of federalism for India. In the context of dissemination of legislative powers, the framers of our constitution maintained a similarity along with the pattern laid down by the Government of India Act 1935, which allowed predominance to be given to the Union Parliament over the state legislature or assemblies. The legislative powers revolve around the scheme of distribution of powers between the Union and the state legislature, which is provided in the three lists under the seventh schedule of the Constitution. Basically, if you have a federal polity, then you divide subjects on which the centre and the states can make uh, laws. We have three lists, uh, that is first is union list, uh, 
the lists under which whatever subjects are there, I suppose there are 99 subjects under the union list. On these subjects, only the union parliament, that's the national parliament can make laws. In the state list, we have around 62 subjects on which only the states can make laws. And third is concurrent list in which we have around 52 subjects on which both the center and the states can make laws. But in case of conflict between the two, suppose there is a subject under the concurrent list on which there is a state law already made. And then union parliament also makes a law. In that case, the central law shall prevail over the state law to the extent of repugnancy. There is a conflict. To the extent of conflict, the state law has to give way to the central law. That's uh, concurrent list. But uh, even on subjects under which the states are supposed to make laws, under certain circumstances, parliament can enact laws. Uh, say, there is president's rule in the state. In that case, all the legislative powers are transferred to parliament. And there are some other circumstances under which union parliament, the national parliament can make laws on the state subjects. Uh, in some cases, if the states, have, suppose Rajya Sabha has uh, recommended by a two-thirds majority, in that case also parliament can make laws on state subjects. The seventh schedule contains three lists, the union list, the state list and the concurrent list. Presently, the union list contains 100 subjects, originally 97. The state list contains 61 subjects, originally 66 and the concurrent list contains 52 subjects, originally 47. Union list. This list comprises subjects of national importance and admit uniform laws for the whole country. This list contains subjects on which the parliament can make laws. For example, railways, communication, defence, post and telegraph, external affairs, etc. The state list contains the subjects on which state legislature can enact laws. For example, health, education, public order, police, sanitation, etc. Such subjects are placed under this list because the state legislature are in a better position to make laws keeping in mind the local conditions of the state. And lastly, there is a concurrent list. It contains subjects on which both the parliament and the state legislatures can enact laws. But the constitution provides federal supremacy to the parliament on items in the concurrent list. These include criminal law, criminal procedure, civil procedure, family planning, education including technical education, medical education and universities protection of wildlife and animals, forest, etc. The union list contains the maximum number of subjects, followed by state list and then the conference list. Over time, subjects under the state list have decreased while the subjects under the union list have got up. These lists which when they define the subjects, it's not that they are exhaustive. They are illustrative that on these subjects, the central government, state government, parliament, Parliament or the state legislature or both of them can make laws. But if you are asking under what law the powers is given, we have to go back to the provision of the constitution. So article 246 onward, there are few articles of the constitution which provide, which provide as to how this power is to be exercised and who can make laws on these subjects. Central government gets power to make laws even in respect of subjects which are given in the state list. And those can be, suppose the state of emergency is declared, power comes to the parliament, parliament can make law. If two states agree that on a particular subject, the central government, the parliament should make a law, then the legislative assembly of the states passes a resolution to that effect and parliament gets power to make laws on those subjects. But mind it, that law will be applicable only in those states who have given consent for making law. If any other state want to extend the central law to their state, then they will have to pass a resolution to that effect. The third contingency can be when uh, suppose under an international obligation, we have taken an obligation, we have ratified a treaty or some convention and in that case also the prerogative of making legislation on sub subject comes to the parliament or the central government. Since 1950, the seventh schedule of the constitution has seen a number of amendments. The union list and the concurrent list have grown, while the subjects under the state list have gradually reduced. 
the 42nd Amendment Act, implemented in 1976, restructured the 7th schedule, ensuring that state list subjects like education, forest, protection of wild animals and birds, administration of justice and weights and measurements were transferred to the concurrent list. The Tamil Nadu government constituted the P.V. Rajamanar Committee to look into the centre-state relations. It spurred other states to voice their opposition to the new power relation born due to the 42nd Amendment and the centre's encroachment on subjects that were historically under the state list. With inputs from Vipul Agarwal, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And that's all we have for you in this edition of In-Depth. We will be back same time tomorrow with the focus of another key subject. You can also watch our program online on YouTube. Suggestions and feedback about the program are welcome. Thank you for watching.